Hey guys, it's Ashby Dashby Farms, and today's episode is in response to a lot of the slash encouragement that I got for feeding bees sugar. So uh, I'm going to tell you more about the application of the sugar that we're providing the bees this time of year, what our goals are with it, and why we do it. Um, so off the top of my head, I'm going to reply to some of the comments we got. So uh, let's start with, I said a lot of commercial beekeepers steal away all the honey and they backfeed sugar. And uh, sugar is referred to as lolly water. And a lot of people disagree with the use of sugar at all. Up in northern climates, there are some commercial beekeepers, particularly those who put their bees away in warehouses, who will, will steal the majority of the honey and backfeed sugar. Um, like Ian Stepler, for instance, he runs... Uh, he wants 90 pounds per 10 frame box, which takes up and doesn't leave a lot of room for the brood nest at all. But he goes five months over winter uh, where the bees don't get to get out of the shed at all. And he doesn't want uh, the bees feeding on honey because of the indigestible solids and the nosema and diarrhea it can create. Mainly in the U.S. altogether, we don't see a lot of nosema because even in, say, Pennsylvania and New York, uh, and even Michael Palmer responded to me on one of the threads. He's in Vermont, I believe, New Hampshire, one of those two. Um, and he's been leaving a lot of honey on his bees for going on 50 years. He doesn't feed much sugar at all. The bees get a few days here and there, maybe even once a month, to get out and defecate. And so he doesn't run into those problems and doesn't find a need to feed a lot of sugar, particularly in the fall. Um, for me, in my application, of course, we're in the Piedmont, Central North Carolina, and our bees get out at least you know every three four days all winter long so we don't run into any digestion issues when i put bees away of course we have a nice fall flow of goldenrod here which tends to be a dark honey it's full of minerals uh, vitamins uh, amino acids that kind of thing that the bees do need so if you're just back feeding sugar you are missing out on all the amino acids and just all around goodness that comes from a natural nectar and pollen flow. We get both goldenrod nectar and goldenrod pollen. Uh, it kind of smells like gym socks, but that in conjunction with the amount of sugar we feed in our fall time, which for me is all, you know, last two weeks of September, first three weeks of October, we're feeding two to one. We put on a lot of weight to each colony. Um, and so our bees have a, I guess you could call it an overall all around good diet to get through the winter. Um, uh, of course they only have to make it from say late October, early November to right now, which is February the 4th today, February 5th, something like that. Um, and so we were only looking at, you know, November, December, January, they got to go three months. And then this week we start feeding pollen patties. We've got the red maples blooming now. And uh, shortly, you know, we'll get a little bit of nectar flow coming in from like camellias, henbit, um, dandelion will start, you know, not that they provide a lot of nectar, mainly pollen, but um, we've got a lot of good stuff incoming. So really in my comment, I don't have five months where the bees can get out. We've only got a three month window we got to get them through. So let's talk about the response to the video from the other day. Um, somebody in the comments said, feeding bees sugar makes them lazy. I'm not going to say that's wrong, but I don't know. Here's one, the only, to me, the only scientific measurable way to test that would be to have a group of colonies say, get together with your bee club in your local county. And, uh, say one person feeds sugar and the other person doesn't as a control, then you could flash forward as long as you're using the same swarm control methods. Uh, and you could look at how much honey each colony brings in. So let's say I run 30 colonies and James over here runs 30 colonies and I feed sugar and he doesn't. And I make a hundred pound average per colony and he makes a hundred pound average per colony. Then feeding sugar, it could be said to not make them lazy. Whereas if my bees only make 30, 40, 50 pounds of sugar, I'm sorry, 30, 40, 50 pounds of honey per colony, and he's still making 100 pounds per colony average across a large number of hives, then certainly you could say that feeding bees sugar 
makes them lazy. That's really the only way to test that. Um, onwards to what our goal is. So we've got like 8,500 frames to get drawn out before. So our, our target date is April 20th. That's when our nectar flow starts here in the Piedmont, North Carolina. Now, of course, we're having a warm winter. So that target date could move two weeks later, could move two weeks earlier, but target date for us is April 20th. So we use early spring, as I mentioned, right now, right out of winter, two to one sugar is best for bees. It doesn't bring a lot of moisture into the hive. You know, two to one is 66%, or I'm sorry, let me make sure I'm telling you right. Uh, two to one syrup is 33% water. Honey, of course, is somewhere around 16 to 18% water. Um, so we're wanting to give them a very thick syrup early on, similar to honey, as simply a way to keep the bees from starving in February and March. Uh, along with the pollen supplement, and then they're foraging for uh, red maple pollen, henbit pollen. Uh, we are able to get some of that. No, nothing beats na natural pollen, but um, our whole goal is to keep the bees alive during the during that period, mainly February. We just had four days in a row of rain where the bees are in the colonies and we can't get to them right now. Um, so during that time, in, instead of just being cooped up in the colony, they're able to put all those resources of pollen patties and two to one syrup around the small cluster that's there and help feed the the brood as it as the brood nest expands. Um, of course, we're gonna come back around Valentine's Day, around March 1st, feed one to one, and that's gonna encourage the queen to get going, get laying, and mainly is drawing out all these frames. So when they're drawing out the frames, it's simply staging for the upcoming April 20th natural nectar flow to make honey but if we wait until that nectar flow it may take them let's say they draw let's say a 10 frame double deep draws a frame a day right that's a week of that window of opportunity that we're losing well if they could instead fill up a frame a day um let's just call a full a full deep frame of of honey i don't know Let's put a dollar sign on that. Uh, it's eight pounds. If you get four pounds, it's 32. So let's just start at 30 bucks. It's $30 a day. In a seven-day period, that's $210 per colony potential that we're letting the bees draw wax instead of filling it with honey. And as a honey producer, I'm after the honey. So we're using February and March to feed bees, uh, either a one-to-one -one or a 1.5 to one, 1.5 parts water to one part sugar, similar to mimicking a nectar flow, so that we draw our frames out. The more drawn out comb we have, the more the queen can lay in them. It, makes, it allows the hive to explode in population three weeks ahead of time. We can then take our splits and sell our splits because I'm in business. Um, if I wanted to go broke, I'd stay home and sit on the couch. I'm in business to make money, but I'm not out here trying to do people over. It's our goal. I mean, that's what we're, we're out here to do is to create more bees. I sell bees. Any bees we don't sell, I can, if I don't, let's say like this year, we're going to produce maybe six, 700 nukes. If we only sell 300, I'll put those 400 to work this year. We'll put them in a queen castle with a nuke on each side of a divider in a 10 frame box, a queen excluder on top. We have two small colonies below making a box of honey on top, a 10 frame box. We're going to use every bit of these splits if we don't sell them. Um, some people are like, oh, you're only in it in the comments. Somebody said, you shouldn't help this guy on YouTube because he's just trying to monetize it. My response is, David Burns has like 100,000 followers on YouTube. He's probably the, the, the most followed beekeeper uh, out there. If you look at YouTube algorithms and YouTube payouts, he maybe makes $1,000 a month from all the videos he makes. It's not financially worth it on YouTube any longer. After about 2018, 
when YouTube refit, redid their monetizing, it's not worth it. My goal is to serve you. I'm here to help. I'm here to offer and give people a, a profitable business model, show them how I do it, um, and help people. You know, I wish that I'd had more people than Bob Benny and Cayman Reynolds and Ian Stepler to watch. Those are the three people really showing their operation and how they're making money. I wish in my expansion of my B business, somebody had helped me out. So that's what I'm trying to do for you. I'm trying to give you a different perspective with the end goal to make some money doing something you love. Um, I love beekeeping. I actually love making videos. That's why uh, if you figure how much time it is to make, edit, post, respond, and then versus the money you get back on YouTube, it's not hardly worth it. So, so helping me monetize YouTube is a, is a poor excuse. Um, and I've responded to that individual as well. Um, as far as, again, I'm going to wrap all this up, but we're using February, March, early April, feeding sugar before the nectar flow to get combs drawn out, get our hive populations up, uh, use it for swarm control, um, where basically we're able to take that expanded brood nest, create other colonies, replace our dead out, dead loss from winter, um, you know, a lot of winters, 10, 20% is not uncommon. Um, and then we're going to monetize all that early input of capital into sugar. It's going to cost me about five grand worth of sugar to then make honey. My honey is not full of sugar water. We are simply using the early spring to draw out combs so that when the nectar flow hits, whenever that is, the bees have somewhere to put all this nectar to dry it out to store honey and ultimately for us to make more honey. So I hope that gives you a bit more. That's Charlotte. <laughs> Say hi, Charlotte. Hi. So uh, I hope that gives you a bit more insight as to baby. I'm just making it. <laughs> okay, that, guys, that's a, a little bit more in depth um, reason why I'm using so much sugar. Again, just to draw out frames early on. Um, that's how I see it from a business point of view, and uh, I hope that helps you. So if you've enjoyed today and you think this content would help others, then what should they do? <laughs> Tell the viewers at home, what should they do? I was not even listening to what you were saying. <laughs> so if the information I've told you today is going to help you out, and it's gonna help out somebody else. What should they do with this video today? Um, Hit the like button. Oh yeah. Share, if and you can share the content, and subscribe. Um, it's not like I'm out here making a killing. We've got a little over 1,100 subscribers. I am trying to grow the channel so that we can help other beekeepers be more successful. And those people who want to expand and grow their outfit, um, I hope this helps. So, guys, y'all have a great day. Ashby at Ashby Farms. My musings on sugar.